Hi, this is Baiju Vasudev and welcome to my channel Pi by Me. Today we are going to solve June 2020 Pure Math 3 paper. This paper consists of 9 questions. In this part 1, we are going to be looking at question number 1 to question number 3. Question number 1. Solve for 0 less than or equal to x less than 360. The equation 2 cos 2x equals 7 cos x. Giving you answer giving you a solution to one decimal place. This question carries 5 marks. We are going to solve this trigonometric equation. When you want to solve a trigonometric equation, step number 1, you need to convert all the trigonometric ratios involving this equation to a same trigonometric ratio. Here it's cosine and cosine, so you can skip you can skip the step number one. Sometimes you will come across cosine and sine or cos and tan, a mix it of trigonometric ratios. If that's the case, you need to use uh, trigonometric identities to convert everything to a same trigonometric ratio. So if you have watched all my videos, you must be well versed in solving trigonometric uh, equations, no matter how complex it is. So, uh, considering this equation, this is not a complex trigonometric equation because both the ratios, trigonometric ratios are cosine and cosine. So, our step number two, you need to look at the theta, it must be same. When I say same, here you have cos 2x, here you have cos x. It's supposed to be cos 2x and cos 2x, then our life will be much easier. You can just uh, make cos 2x as a subject, you can solve it or cos x and cos x. But in this equation you have cos 2x and cos x. So you need to you need to apply trigonometric identities to convert them to the same theta. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this cos 2x. There is a trigonometric ratio, trigonometric identity 2 cos square x minus 1. I'm going to apply this here. So it will be 2 times 2 cos square x minus 1, bring it to the left side, minus 7 cos x equals 0. Now in here we have cos x, x, everything same. So just simplify this, remove the bracket and simplify, you will have 4 cos square x minus 7 cos x and minus 2 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation in cos x. Solve this quadratic equation, you will get two solutions. Cos x is the first solution and another one. And then solve them separately within this interval. So first value is 2 and minus 1 by 4. Now we need to solve these two trigonometric equations separately within the given range. But when you look at this, cos 2x equals 2. This is your cosine graph. And the maximum value is 1, minimum value will be minus 1. If we talk about the line y is equal to 2, it will be somewhere here. So there is no point of intersection at all. So this point 2 is out of the range. So there is no solution for this equation. So you can neglect this equation move on to the second one. So how do we solve this? Don't worry about the negative sign. Find the principal value x equals cos inverse of 1 by 4. So my answer is 75.522 but they want the answer in one decimal place. So it's 75.5 degree. Keep the calculator in degree mode. This is not our solution. This is called the principal value. Now we are going to use the ASTC diagram. To find all the solutions within this range, the 0 to 360, the 360 is not included. So you need to look for the quadrant where your cos theta is negative. Cos will be negative here and here, S and T. Here the solution is 180 minus theta. Here it will be 180 plus theta. So our two solutions are 180 minus theta and 180 plus theta. So 
so it's 104.5 degree and 255.5 degree. So this is how we solve a trigonometric equation. Question number two. A scientist monitored the growth of a bacteria on a dish over a 30 day period. The area n millimeter square of the dish covered by bacteria t days after monitoring began is modeled by the equation log n to the base 10 equals 0 0.0646 t plus 1.470 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 30. Part A show that this equation may be written in the form n is equal to a b to the power t where a and b are constants give the value of a to the nearest integer and b to three significant figure this question carries four marks now we are given this equation they want you to rewrite this equation in this form so in general if you have log a to the base b equals x you can rewrite this uh, logarithmic equation an equation involving logarithmic function into this form b to the power x equals a you can rewrite this or if you are given this you can rewrite this using logarithmic function that's what basically we are going to do we have log a to the base b equals x this whole thing is x so you can rewrite it as b to the power x b is 10 so 10 to the power x x is this whole thing 0 0.0646 t plus 1.478 equals a a is this m and that's it you can just split this into two uh, two terms not two terms uh, 10 to the power this into 10 to the power 1.478 using laws of indices. So you can rewrite this as n equals 10 to the power 0 0.0646 t times 10 to the power 1.478. This 10 to the power 1.478 is going to be our a. So round it to the nearest integer. And you can rewrite this as 10 to the power 0 0.0646 to the power t using laws of indices 1.478 that's it you calculate these two values and you got the this form already so the value of this is 30.06 rounded to the nearest integer so it will be 30 times 10 to the power this to the power t is uh, 1.160 something they want you to write it in write the now value to three significant figure so it will be 1.16 to the power t that's our answer so i'm going to repeat this again if you want to get rid of this logarithmic function you need to know how to rewrite this using powers so if you have log a to the base b equals x you can write it as b to the power x equals a so that's what we are trying to do. Write it as b to the power x. b to the power x equals this a. And then basically it's about uh, simplifying using laws of uh, indices. So you split them into two terms. 10 to the power this is 30. And 10 to the power this equals 1.16 to 3 significant figure. That's it. Part b. Use the model to find the area of the dish covered by the bacteria 30 days after monitoring began. Give your answer to two significant figures. This question carries two marks. In part B, they want you to find the value of n, the area covered by the bacteria, when t is equal to 30 days after uh, 30 days after the monitoring began. So just replace t by 30 here and calculate the value, write it to, write the value to three significant figures, uh, two significant figures. So n equals 30 times 1.16 to the power 30. So the answer is basically 2575.49, etc. When you round it to two significant figures, 
it will be 2500 zero zero, but since this number is more than 5 it's 2600 zero. that's it you don't need to do anything at all just substitute the t is equal to 30 here and calculate the value question number 3 you are given a figure figure 1 shows a sketch of the curve with the equation y equals f of x where f of x equals 2x plus 3 divided by square root of 4x minus 1 where x greater than 1 by 4. Part A, find f dash of x. This question carries 4 marks. Part B, find the range of f of x. This question carries 3 marks. In here, you are given the figure for this function f of x. In part A, they want you to differentiate this with respect to x. So, which is f dash of x is, we are going to apply the quotient rule u upon v. The quotient rule is v du minus u dv upon v square derivative of u upon v. Take this function as u and v. So v du, keep v as it is to the power half into differentiate this function 2 times 1 plus 0 which is just 2 minus Keep this function as it is, u as it is, differentiate the function v. So when you differentiate this v, you can apply chain rule. We have 4x minus 1 to the power half. Consider this as x. You have x to the power half. So it will be half into x to the power half minus 1 times you have to differentiate the function which was considered as x. That's our chain rule. So when you differentiate this, it's 4 minus 0. So it's just 4. Simplify this, you'll have 2 times this. 2 times 4x minus 1 to the power minus half divided by v square. Uh, it's not u square, sorry, it's v square. v square, when you square this, it's 4x minus 1. That's all. That's the derivative of this function. Now it's all about simplification. We need to simplify this and write the answer in the most simplified form. So I'm going to take this as a common factor out. 4x minus 1 to the power minus half. Our denominator is the same. When you take 4x minus 1 to the power minus half as a common factor, this can be multiplied and divided by minus half. So if you take minus half out, out as a common factor, you will be left with 4x minus 1. You can verify this by multiplying these two. When you multiply these two by applying laws of indices, 1 minus 1 by 2, you will have a positive 1 by 2. And of course, you have 2, this 2 also, minus 2 into 2x plus 3. That's it. You can bring it here in the denominator so it will become positive. So we have 8x minus 2 minus 4x minus 6 divided by 4x minus 1 into 4x minus 1 to the power half. This will be 4x minus 8. So you will have 4x minus 8 divided by 4x minus 1 to the power 3 by 2. Apply laws of indices. That's it. So if you want to differentiate this, you need to know this quotient rule. When you have a function in the form of u upon v, the derivative of the function is v du minus u dv upon v square. v is the function in the denominator. u is the function on top. So this is our first derivative of f of x. In part b, they want you to find the range of this function. Look at the diagram. This is the graph representing this function. So we need to find the range of uh, values of f of x. So if you know this turning point, if you know this turning point, let's say it's a, f of x will take all the values above it. it will never come below the line y is equal to a so how do we find the turning point in differentiation we learned 
if you want to find the stationary point or the turning point, find the first derivative which we have already, equate it to zero so you can get the x coordinate of the, the turning point. So when you equate this to zero, 4x minus 8 divided by 4x minus 1 to the power 3 by 2 is zero. So bring this term here, 4x minus 8 is zero, x is 8 upon 4. That's the x coordinate of this turning point. Now when we talk about range, we don't want the x coordinate, we want the y coordinate or the value of f of x. So substitute this x back into the function. So our f of 2 is, replace x by 2, 4 plus 3 is 7 divided by 2 fours are 8 minus 1 is square root of 7. Multiply and divide by root 7. So you will have, it will be uh, written as 7 root 7 by 7 or just root 7. That's the y coordinate here. So now we know for sure f of x will take all the values above root 7. So the range of f of x is f of x greater than or equal to root 7. That's the range of this function.